and this marks my dive into the belly of a leviathan, folks. Dragon Slayer is the very first game in the franchise far better known today by its subseries, The Legend of Heroes, which itself is famous for its own subseries, Trails, and its own subseries, Trails of Cold Steel. Whew, got all that? I'm still wrapping my head around it myself. While I have no plans to play the entire overarching series in release order, I did want to at least try the first entry before checking out the later, more well-known games. As such, I didn't know what to expect heading in, and if you want to follow my journey through this storied series, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a video. I quickly found out Dragon Slayer's an action RPG, though calling this action might be pushing it. The gameplay demonstrates heavy arcade influences, which makes sense considering the original released in 1984 before modern consoles took off. By the way, I played the Sega Saturn remake, which cleans up the visuals and performance a ton, but doesn't change any of the actual gameplay as far as I know. Said gameplay locks you to a grid, forcing you to take a single step at a time, and also includes a bunch of ideas that seem off the wall today, but remind me of ancient home computer and arcade games I've seen over the years, like pushing blocks around, walking into enemies to attack them, and heavy punishment for failure. At the same time, Dragon Slayer acts as a bridge between arcade stylings and modern RPG sensibilities. This pioneering proto-RPG was a hit in Japan, after all, by adding a taste of the RPG flavor we love today, like stats, MP, and experience, which all get raised through gameplay, or an increasing list of spells to cast. The action takes place on a single scrolling map that loops around on itself, like a lot of arcade games, but funnily enough, also like most of the classic JRPGs from the decades that followed. In Dragon Slayer, it's implied that you're adventuring through a world that's much bigger than what you see. As you travel from your little house to the terrifying boss dragon in the far corner, it's clear you're not supposed to be thinking about how close it would be had you been able to cross the mountains and go the opposite way. The cool thing, however, is that eventually you can do just that. Dragon Slayer's got three main equipable items your hero can pick up, but he can only hold one at a time, leading to a lot of not fun backtracking. For example, the Power Ring lets you slide blocks around, opening access to new areas and plenty of those sweet, sweet treasure chests, but you'll need to be holding the key in order to open said chests. Worse, if you set an item down, there's a chance this annoying creature that flies around randomly will swoop down and carry it off to another spot on the map. That's the kind of classic arcadey mechanic I don't miss in games today, purely a holdover annoyance from an era where difficulty and time spent was the content. Lastly, crystals can be taken back to your home base to raise your strength stat, which means, you guessed it, even more backtracking. At least these buffs are useful since monsters hit hard, though it's hilarious how much stronger you get from a single crystal. Still, you'll need a lot more than one to have any hope of taking on the dragon who made short work of me the first time I got curious and entered his domain. Coins, the most common chest reward, mercifully do not require inventory space and can be returned to home base for a health upgrade. Why the game makes you carry crystals one by one but not coins puzzles me, but hey, it was the mid-80s, wacky game mechanics were in. Finally, magic jars increase your MP by one when you pick one up. There's no concept of maximum stats here, you just have whatever MP you've got and can keep adding as much as you want. That said, only the map spell and warp spells ever came in handy for me, and the enemies pose no challenge once you get the hang of the mechanics, so the game doesn't justify the time you spend roaming around collecting all this stuff. You're either strong enough to beat the dragon, or you're not, and between the initial bewilderment period of figuring out the quirky mechanics and that admittedly cool boss fight, there's a whole lot of nothing fun. On top of that, Dragon Slayer features a single, repetitive music track that's catchy, I suppose, but not catchy enough to not wear out its welcome fast, and I haven't even mentioned the game's second stage, which feels like an exercise in more useless repetition after what should have been a badass final boss. On the whole, there's not enough to Dragon Slayer to recommend anyone play it except for historical appreciation. I will say this, it's got a core addictive quality in there somewhere that kept me playing all the way through. It helps that it's very short, only a few hours tops. The idea of designing new paths through a world while raising stats and avoiding enemies has merit, but gets let down by a presentation and execution too old school even for me. 
I didn't grow up playing many arcade games, so my biases may be showing, but I feel confident saying most JRPG fans would have a better time with the first Legend of Heroes game. Still an old school treat, but one more in line with what we recognize as JRPGs today. Thanks for watching. I've been Leon from RPG Haven. Leave a like for that algorithm, subscribe for more videos on RPGs old and new, and have a blessed day.